Welcome, Netrunners, to the fourth and final round of play at the twice-monthly Netrunner Tournament at the 20-sided store in Brooklyn, New York, that took place on May 4th. 2014, the very first tournament that we played with Honor and Profit cards. For a second, you know, I was thinking, hey, were the Honor and Profit cards actually out for this tournament? How many, you know, we haven't seen anyone play any of the identities um, yet uh, in any of these rounds. I haven't really seen a lot of Honor and Profit cards. Was this real? Yes, someone played against me the Planned Assault, right? Um, the Planned Assault account site. And so here we are in the fourth round. I've won, I've played three rounds so far, and I've won three games and lost three games. So the best I can be is five and three if I win both of these games. Not, probably not good enough to win a tournament. Uh, you know, you're going to need to be six and two uh, to win. That's okay. Can't win them all. You know, after, after getting swept in the second round, I mean, it was sort of foregone that I wasn't going to win. Um, listen to people, don't get used to winning, right? Um, you know, it, it totally messes with your psychology, right? It's, you're much better off being an underdog, uh, than being the favorite, right? Psychologically, uh, going into a tournament, right? You can't be like the kind of underdog where it's like, you're so awful, it would be a miracle if you won, like Mighty Ducks miracle, you want to be sort of like that mid-major in the NCAA tournament, where you're really good, but you're just not considered to be as good as the best teams out there, but you're still really good. And then when you come in, you know, you realize, hey, those people with the best teams out there, they got the same cards you got. They got the same kind of brain you got. Are they any better than you? You can, you can take them. And that's how you win. Uh, and if you win all the time, you know, you start being that number one seed, and you're not going to make it. So, you know, even if you are winning, throw that idea away, right? Okay, so here we go, playing MBN first this time in round four against his final opponent. Sorry, I forget who this was that I played against. <laughs> Uh, I'm having, you know, but that's good, right? It's it's not the same old people uh, that I'm always playing against, right? That's good. Um, I'll sure I'll learn these people's names um, in the next, uh, you know, if they keep going to twenty sided, and because uh, I haven't seen them at anywhere else, uh, I'll get to know them and remember their names. And I really like the color of his sleeves. Oof. I wish the, they would make the hyper mats in bright colors, not just dark colors. Okay, he's got Chaos Theory going on. I got MBN going on. No link. Happy day. <laughs> Icing it up and playing a transaction. It's a sweep, sweep. Sweep. Under the rug. All right, run my servers on a res my ice. Actually, no, I'd much, if you didn't run, that'd be even cooler because then I could save my money. In fact, here's what you should do. Just don't run at all, ever. Ah, oh, he's running. I let him access. Looks like suit speak to me. Is he going to get rid of his cards after seeing that? Oh, okay. So here's what he did. Chicana. That is not a card you see often at all, right? He was running R&D to see if I could res that ice. Boom. Toll boof. See, I wasn't going to res the toll booth, but if he has a Chicana, yeah, I'm going to res my toll booth. Chicana is a lot more insidious here than uh, if he manages to get it filled up, right? Um, he has no money right now. If he manages to fill up that Chicana, that's a lot more dangerous to me than a the copy of the source, right? Because with the source, I just have to score to breaking news, and then the source is gone, unless they have Fall Guy. But even then, right? Um... Chicana doesn't go anywhere unless I clear virus counters. That can really ruin my day. Uh, quite, it, it's just much more annoying. Um, yeah, not not a bad play on his part. Um, trying to, you know, running R and D, assuming that because I didn't res, I couldn't res or wasn't going to, 
and that he could install the Jakana and fill it up immediately. Really hampering my game. Not a bad move. Uh, but now, because he's shown his Chicana hand, right? Um, okay. Big lucky on the transactions this time. When I'm lucky on the transactions early, that usually means the game's going to be good. Uh, and it's going to be over quickly. <laughs> yep, he's just got to take money. Boom. San San. And what is it? Astroscript. This will be over shortly. I'm sorry. This card exists. I didn't print the card. I'm just playing it. Trash my sand sand for all your money? Yes, please. I have an Astro script. See, this is where I'd like to have a fast track. <laughs> Oh, what do I have there? Oh. <laughs> I top decked another Astro script. Choo choo. You know, I can't, you know, I don't know who first called this Astro Train. It may have been me by accident, whatever. But, you know, people have been like, you know, Astro Train, you know, like Astro Script plus it's sort of a train, right? One leads into the other. You know, you're riding these rails uh, to victory. But Astro Train is the name of a Generation 1 Transformer. That's that's where that comes from. And people don't seem to know that. I think I might have to go and buy an Astro Train figure and um, bring it around with me as my Netrunner avatar. Right? Just put him on the table before a game starts. Be like, you see who this is? Who is this? And if they know who it is, they'd be like, it's Astro Train. And I'd be like, you got it. And if they don't know who it is, I'll be like, this is Astro Train. Watch and transform him and be all awesome. Anyway. So the score is 4 Uh That Chicana is not active yet. Drawing up some cards. My Jackson Howard. Maybe I'll draw an Astro Script. <laughs> the third one. It could happen. <laughs> then the game would be over. And I'll take some money. <laughs> All right, test run. What's he test running? Oh, my nemesis, the magnum opus. Mm. That's a problem. That is a problem, because he could easily take a ton of money with magnum opus, drop a femme on my toll booth, and go to town with that chicana. That is something that could happen, but... If that is, if he has a fem, he could have test run the fem, run three times to fill the Jakana. And gotten the Magnum Opus later. If the Jakana is sort of more important, is that something that actually quickly blocks me from just, you know, zipping to victory? Uh, at least I would consider it to more important okay so here I'm protecting this Jackson Howard with an RSVP uh, the reason I'm doing that is because a he's gonna bring out a magnum opus and be able to trash everything uh, so that will help right and I want to keep that Jackson because I need this card draw I've got a fistful of ice and I've spent all my money uh, so I need to draw cards to get more transactions to find the you know Agendas, right? This fistful of ice is not getting me anywhere. You know, I need to protect that card draw, and I have the three credits to do it. He's bringing out his magnum opus, and taking four. He's using my fives. Okay, you can use my fives. Why don't I put that Sansan -San in with the Jackson Howard? Oh, okay, I'll make another server for it. That works too. Oh, a double server. Interesting. Okay, I'll set up some new kind of remote. I want to keep those three credits, though, on hand to protect Jackson. He's taking a bunch of, whole bunch of money with Magnum Opus, and... 
What now? Taking even more money. Okay. Put an ash and the sand sand together. Sounds good. And take a money. Cool. What's he doing? Take two. Running. R and D, okay. Fem, I hope. Yeah, okay, good. Good choice. That'll get it done. And now you can fill up your Chicana. You could have filled it up like three turns ago, right? I mean, we know that that's Ash Sanson in the remote, but that could be Ash Beal <laughs> or Ash NEPD or something. Um, or who knows what? You know, that Chicana, I would have made filling it up a much earlier priority. A breaking news. You can have one point. I don't care. I have four points. Chicana one. No trashy to pad campaigny. That's a shame. Even with your magnum opus. Okay. See the same card again. And Chicana is filled. Congratulations. Congratulations. And st oh, what's he doing? So someone's texting him. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm throwing out my toll booth. I probably shouldn't do that. It's still costing him one every time, right? It's keeping him from scavenging his femme to some other location. A lot of people do that, They'll, you know, to save the one credit on that install. They would throw out that toll booth. But look, as long as that toll booth is there, he cannot move the femme with a scavenge to somewhere else because then R&D would be secure. If I throw out the toll booth, then he scavenges the femme somewhere else, and now R&D is insecure. Right. Uh, am I am I using? I think I'm using Jackson Howard of my own volition to shuffle cards back into R and D to try to get a different. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, am I trying to get the transactions back in to get some money? Oh, I see. I wanted to put the pad campaign behind the RSVP that Jackson was behind, but I couldn't do that because Jackson was there. So I used Jackson um, and then put the pad campaign, right? Because it's basically, I can't put the pad, I was thinking about putting the pad campaign out on its lonesome, but he's got a magnum opus. That ain't going to last, right? That's going to disappear so fast. Uh, so if I put it behind the RSVP, then I can actually crank that pad campaign hard, uh, most likely. No, because he's already used his SMC, and he only has one memory left, so it's not like he can put another SMC on the table unless he throws out either the Femme or the Chicana, right? Or finds a mem chip or something. Um, all right, run R&D. Thank you! Are you going to pay two? He pays two. It's a sand sand you can't trash. Pad campaign behind the RSVP. Oh, yes. So good. And I'll take some monies. Okay, so now I have three, four, five, six, seven. 
please run my pop-up window, allowing me to score with my sand sand. Oh, but you have Jakana, so I can't necessarily do that. Okay, there's another pop-up window, not on R&D, a rarity for me. Uh, but the reason I did that is because I was in a situation where I wanted to be able to res the RSVP behind it uh, on the turn where I set that up, right? And I think I needed the one... I don't know, remember. Why the hell did I do that? If anything, it should have been RSVP pop-up window, not... I don't know. Anyway, so he sees the sand sand in the ash, neither of which he can do anything about because RSVP. Why did I put that pop-up window there? It's not like he's got a inside job. Huh. I don't know what my thinking was with that. Why didn't I just put that pop-up window on R&D with the other ones? Or even HQ. I don't know. Very strange play by me. Maybe I thought I was going to be able to get him to keep running the remote over and over. No, but if there's an RSVP, he's not going to do that. Oh, he's running R&D? Is that why he took a credit? It's a Beal. You can have that. He's so eager. He's like, who an agenda? Just reaches over and grabs it. You can't just let me hand it to him. He's got to actually physically steal. Very thematic. Okay. Okay, so watch this. Pad campaign. Install. That's a breaking news that I installed there. Right? So he can't steal it because of the RSVP uh, Ash combo. I'm turning a three ones into a three. <laughs> that doesn't cost any clicks. And he gets an interface. Okay. Run R and D. Thank you for pop up window. Make sure my cards are lined up. <laughs> Very important. Okay, going to protect R&D a little more here, because I can afford it. Turn some more ones into big ones, <laughs> threes. Thanks for pop-up window and pad campaign. I've been getting a lot of ones. I got my money. See, now why didn't I just score that breaking news? Well, there's no point in doing a closed accounts, right? When he's got six credits. I want him to, like, take eight, and then I'm going to do breaking news closed accounts. Right? That's what I want. Because I'm thinking he's not going to run HQ because he can't get in. He's not going to run R&D because it's an unknown ice, which could be a destroyer. Right, which could take out his Chicana or his Fam or his Opus, basically ending the game. Um, I guess he's not running the pad campaign for the same reason. He can't run the remote because he knows it's Ash, Sand, Sand, RSVP. There's nothing he can do about that. So, like, draw cards or take eight. He's got an Atman in his hand. Why doesn't he make it a strength three and run for the remote after taking... Well, even then, you want to prepare for that by taking eight credits. Um, with the Opus, right? Because you're going to need a lot of money to fight the Ash Trace and trash it. 
so all right, play the same old thing. Do that. My turn. Here we go. Yeah, see, he took a bunch of credits in addition to playing the same old thing. So I'm going to res the San San, score the breaking news with two clicks, because Chicana's there. That's why. It cost me, right? And then closed accounts. Closed accounts is not that effective against Opus because they can just take eight again. Immediate recovery, right? Um, other decks, and you closed accounts, they cannot get the money back. But, thankfully, um, you know, that's why I waited until he took eight, right? Waiting that one turn made it that much more damaging, right? It's like, I can't stop you from getting money again, but I can take away the money you already got. And now he's in a bad situation. I have a res sand sand he cannot trash, right? Even if he puts down that Atman at three strength to break an RSVP, he can't trash the sand sand. I'm going to have money because I have a pad campaign he can't get rid of either. Um, if he tries to run R&D, you know, best case for him, I get money with pop-up windows. So I'm going to have money. I have an Astro token. I have a sand sand. It, the Chicana is basically canceled out. That's the thing is you think, aha, source, Chicana, these kinds of cards help fight fast advance. No, all they do is turn fast advance into regular advance. <laughs> it still will beat you, <laughs> right? Um, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's fast advance is actually the weapon you need to beat Chicana and the source. It's like, if, if you think about it this way, think about it in reverse. What if all the runners were playing Chicana and the source, right? Suddenly, everyone would need... It's like, how do I counter that? Well, with Sand Sands and Astro Scripts and Biotic Laborers. That's how you counter that, right? How do I score when they're making everything take an extra advancement? With fast advancing? So, it, you know, that's how that works. If someone's playing without fast advance and you play Chicana or the Source, then they're really hosed, right? Because it's like if they got a 5 for 3, suddenly that becomes a... You know, six for three. That turns it into a mandatory upgrade. Oh boy, that's rough, right? If they're playing a three for two and they're hoping to install it and then advance, advance, advance the next turn, well, they can't. They're going to have to put it down and advance it at least once. That really changes that game. Um, but then again, there's an argument to be made that, well, it actually doesn't change their game. They were planning to install and advance agendas on, leave them on a remote anyway. And if they were willing to do that, then Chicana or the Source, does it really affect them? Right? Now, granted, you know, Chicana here in this situation has um, slowed me down a bit, but he filled it up too late to stop me from getting the early Astro scripts, right? Which is, and um, because he spent a bunch of resources on it, he. Oh. He's got five points, though. Right. He was not really able to do any other sort of magic, so. He's taking six. Okay. My turn. Victory draw. Was that an NEPD he accessed and was unable to score? It was an NEPD that he accessed and was unable to score. He could have won if he had the four credits. That was close. That was really close. Okay. Can I score it? Let's see, if I install Advance Advance, that's two. The Sand Sand makes three, the Astro makes four, but I need five because there's a Chicana, right? Yeah. But if I install it in the server and just leave it there, like that, well, the RSVP and the Ash should protect it. So I'll install and take two, and now he needs to... He knows what I did. <laughs> there's no question. He knows what I did. Um... So in order to stop that, he has to break the RSVP and the pop-up window and beat the Ash and have four after beating the Ash to steal the NAPD, and then he wins. So 
He's got eight credits. And the only way he can beat the RSVP is to install a three strength Atman, so that would cost him as Chaos Theory six. So that leaves him with two credits. Two to get in, then he loses to Ash. Okay. So, oh, he's gonna same old thing, something. A test run, okay, for three. Another fem, a second, a second fem. That saves him three credits versus installing the three strength Atman. Uh, if he test runs a second fem. A Gordian Blade. That doesn't... It saves him... Does it save him any credits? Installing six and seven. Three, four, five. It saves him two credits. Um, versus the Atman play. So... Hey, okay, not, not the end of the world. Okay. Um, and he's making a single run. Mistake. He knows... Ash, he should remember that Ash is in there. Okay. He's seen this Ash before. He has three credits left. I res the Ash. He's seen the Ash before. He accessed it once. Trace a lot. Uh, he has three credits. I don't even need to boost the Ash Trace. If Ash wins, you can access Ash and only Ash. Well, you, it's your last click. So, are you going to trash him? It doesn't matter. He does. You have no clicks left. It's my turn. Mandatory draw. I didn't even pad campaign. I advanced three times, plus Sand Sand, plus Astro Script is five. And there you go. Five advanced any PD for the win. Seven to five. Didn't even clear virus counters on the Chicana, and if he had run R&D, which he could have on that final turn, that would not have given him the win. There was not a two-pointer there. That's another thing, right? It's like, on that final turn, he knew the Ash was there. He should have, I mean, the points weren't in the R&D. He wouldn't have had it, but he could get in there, um, you know, by taking Magnum, taking six and running. Um... He could even possibly have gotten in twice, maybe. One, two, three, four, five. He had seven credits. Take two, run, trash Jackson, run again. He could have, maybe, if he took four, no, I don't, I don't know, if he would have been able to make it twice uh, into R&D. And also trash Jackson on the first run to see a third card. Um, but yeah, I, you, I think you run R&D on that last turn. You know it's Ash. You, he knows it's Ash any PD, or he should have known. He should have known that it was unbeatable. Um, it's maybe, you know, but if he ran the Ash in the third click and trashed it, yeah, then he wouldn't have had money to run it, um, to run it again uh, a second time. And he wouldn't even had the, the three credits to break into the server, let alone the four more to score the any PD, so... All right, here we go. A second replicating perfection opponent at this tournament. Wow. Replicating all over the place. Much replication. Did I learn anything from my previous replicating game that I could use in this one? We shall see. We shall see. Shuffle a lot, people. Trust me. Shuffle a lot. You never know when you'll get a bad draw. Like, I think that's a bad draw right there. Am I keeping that? Or am I waiting for him to decide? No, he's mulligan ending.
Ooh, we can see some of the cards there. Am I keeping all these, really? Oh, you know why I think I'm keeping this? Is that Deus Ex in my hand from the get-go? Yeah, sometimes, you know, it's like there's one Deus Ex in my deck. I see Jinteki on the other side of the table. And, you know, I just sort of have to keep that hand regardless of what else is in it. I don't know. I can't even tell if that actually is a Deus Ex in there. Come on, me. Show me my hand. Okay. Let's see what this replicating perfection does. Is it any different from the other one? No, it looks like pretty similar. Sundews. <laughs> Ice. Spends three credits right away to gift me. Okay. Sundu. Caprice. Private contracts. Is that a second celebrity gift? An ice. Thanks for showing me that you only have one ice and nothing dangerous. I'm taking a second look just to remember what's there. Okay. And... Take one click left because you gifted me. What are you going to do? Install the ice that I 100% know what the ice is. Yeah, that is a deus ex in my hand. Install. Uh, I'm going to get the early data sucker play. I have to spend three. Yeah. No, did I spend too much money? I should have two credits now, not one. Oh, I spent too much money. Wait, am I counting? Am I getting it right? Okay, I got it right. Good. <laughs> okay. And what do I see? Something that I can't take or do anything to. And I got my early data second. Okay. Shuffling a lot. All right, Replicator, I see you drawing cards there. What's that, an upside-down Junebug? He's going to gift me again. Oh, thanks for letting me know that your hand is no more ice. And there's a Junebug in there I'd really like to trash. And a Mushin Nushin. You're not going to Mushin Nushin anything but that Junebug. So I, and I have a Deus Ex, so I can clear it out. And you can't trick of light if you even have one. Take my R&D runs. Is a Fetal. I'll score that. Yeah, I'll score that. Do two damage. You don't do three, because you're... Okay. I don't need those. Scavenge and private... Uh, Plascrete? Yeah. Do not need those. Thanks for taking away two cards I did not need. Uh, do I run R&D again? Draw. Draw. And a clone ship. Okay. I could have run R&D again after scoring the fetal, but I guess if there was a second fetal or an NAPD, I would not have been able to take it. Uh, and that would have been, you know, the fetal would have been upsetting at least. Oh, wait, was it a fetal, really? I think I see one in his hand, which means that it was. So I guess it's really good that I didn't run again. Although I could have taken two credits and run again. All right, res your son, do. I'm going to have to trash that Sundu right away. Do I take two credits, run R&D, run Sundu? Oh, I have an Infiltration. I could use that to get two credits. Run R&D, run Sundu. Oh, I'm going to take three credits. And... What am I doing? Oh, Daily Cast. Okay. I'll let you have your Sundu. And I'll Daily Cast. And then I'll come back at you. An NAP... Is that an NAPD? Oh, it's a, it's a future... Uh, no, it's a, whatever, future perfect thingy. Oh, 
So I guess his deck looks like it's all, based on what we see here and what we saw when he was shuffling, it seems like he's doing the play where it's all the hard to score agendas. Three NAPDs, three you know, future perfects, and three fetals, right? That seems to be a popular thing with replicating now. Sort of straightforward, but, you know, pretty effective. You know, if you touch an agenda, you might not be able to score it. And if the three-pointer's in a remote, you're, it's replicating, so it's going to be hard to score. It basically costs you a lot to score anything. Um, you can't just t touch agendas and take them. Every single agenda, except for a future perfect in a remote, uh, is going to be a pain to score. So very, very hard to get seven. All right, now he's got the Sundu and the pad campaign going. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, look at this. I'm spending my time building up this ice destruction mechanism, but he doesn't have ice. I'm wasting my time <laughs> trying to counter something he doesn't even have. That's actually up, oh, Mushin Nushin. All right, Mushin Nushin. I'm ready for you. Uh, but now there's an ice. <sighs> Thank you. Install my Deus Ex. Run R and D. Probably right. Run R and D. Yes. Trash it, June Bug. Oh, okay. Now I want to run the remote that he just mushin no shinned. But there's an ice there, and even though I have a clone chip, I don't have anything in the trash to clone chip. <laughs> right? I don't have an SMC. I don't have a test run. I don't have... Oh, there is an SMC in the trash. But there's no way that I can possibly do anything with that SMC, because I only have two credits. So even if I clone chip the SMC and then spend two, and then install an Indy, I can't break anything. That's. I guess that's the only situation where I could actually... Oh, I infiltrated it. That was a waste of time. I should have infiltrated for two credits and then run it. I run it. Abaco keeps me out. Yeah, if I infiltrated for two credits, I would have been able to run it. Clone chip, SMC, Inti. Uh, yeah, break, because I have data suckers. And then I would have taken the three points. Misplay. Misplay. Wait a minute, how did I do that? Install Deus Ex, run R&D, infiltrate, run. Okay. I could have gone, if I would have gone install Deus Ex, run R&D, infiltrate for two credits, run. Uh, or even take a credit, run. I would have had the three points. The slimmest of margins there, the slimmest. But I mean, how was I to know that it was it was a Baco, right? Uh, that could have been a Katana. Well, I guess it was anything but in the run, I would have gotten in. And how many credits did he have? But now he's got three points. Well, uh, that's yours, that's mine. Don't don't try to take two points, all right? You already got three. Be satisfied. <laughs> satisfied with what you got. Does he have no money at all? Did he just draw another future perfect? <laughs> okay. All right. Credit, sure gamble. See, that's the thing is what I really wanted to do that turn was credit, sure gamble, run R&D, run Deus Ex, run R&D, run remote. It's a snare. I don't think he can afford it. Oh, he does. oh, his money's over there. Okay, so he does have a lot of money. I Deus Ex the snare. I get tagged. And I remove the tag. Because I want to protect my daily cast, I guess, for another turn. Uh, I mean, I guess I should have let the tag go. What's he going to do, trash my daily cast? He probably doesn't have any tag punishment. Yeah, that sundew that I haven't been able to trash. See, this is another example of why I need that Desperado. Look how many R&D accesses I get, right? Look how much money extra I would have if I have the Desperado. Man, it's such a shame. 
right? It's like when I'm, my deck is ice destruction, but the way to beat me is is don't play ice. <laughs> if you don't spend your money on ice, then <laughs> you can spend your money on this other stuff <laughs> and beat me. Uh, and it doesn't, you know, I've spent all my clicks on just getting these accesses, which I can't not get. And as long as I don't score agendas on those accesses, then it doesn't really matter. It seems like the games that I lose with this deck are games where I end up, you know, with this open, uh, get, getting exactly what I want. There's a wide open server, right? And, you know, I'm just like, run, 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 run. I spent all my clicks on these runs and not building up anything, right? Like, R&D's open. Okay, well, I'll just have my data sucker and I'll keep running it forever. Run, run, run. I don't score. I don't get indexing. Look, I haven't had indexing this game. If I had it, ooh, that'd be so good. I don't score anything. I spend all my clicks on that. I don't spend clicks building anything. So then when they make a remote and I have to run it, I don't have anything ready to actually get in there and then they can score. Okay, so now I've got an Inti and a Zero Atman. So I run there. Cool. Very cool. An RSVP, huh? That's a problem. Well, no. I guess I can uh, break it. Yep. I use three data suckers or four and a credit to break the RSVP. And then uh, just one and a credit. Yeah, one and a credit to break the Baco. Okay. Yep. I'll access. Oh, I'm getting my Deus Ex just in case. Okay, and it's a fetal. Okay, I'll spend my last two credits on the fetal and take the damage. Uh, am I going to block the damage? Um, no, I don't care about those cards. I'll, I'll, I'll take the damage. All right, four to three, back in the lead. And I got your remote all set, and I can refill my data sucker to get in the remote from R&D. Uh, so that's pretty good. But I have no money right now, right? So right now, if I had to run the remote, I couldn't. I would have, you know, t I need two credits to get in to break both subroutines. So take two credits. Then I need one, two, three, four, five data suckers. Five data suckers and two credits is what it cost me to get in there. So unless I have another data sucker, I cannot get in that remote this turn. He seems to recognize that, and he's got all the money in the world he needs to advance things. So in goes an agenda. Yep. Okay. Draw, draw. Where's my indexing? I run R&D. A fetal that I can't score. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? See, that's that's what it's all about. When you've got every agenda in his entire, all right. So I Deus Ex to avoid the damage, and then I let him have the fetal. Did I get my data sucker? All right, I got my data sucker. Not gonna take a credit. Oh God! Every agenda in his deck is hard to score. If you have no money, there's no point in accessing anything, right? Unless it's a three-pointer in a remote. And that was a three-pointer in a remote. Great. <laughs> Amazing. It's now six to four. <laughs> oh, and I know 100% that he just drew a fetal AI. So if I want to score a fetal AI, and he puts it in the remote next turn, which he can definitely do because I was not able to trash his Sundews or Pad campaigns with my limited economy. Let's see. I need two credits, and I need five data suckers. I need four credits and five data suckers. Um, right? Yeah, I need four credits. Two to break the two subroutines, two to score the fetal, and five data suckers to break both ice. Um, I don't think it's possible for me to get that much 
in one turn. So, uh, yeah, and just, you know, he's just going to do it, right? Right? Install and advance your fetal twice because I can't possibly take it. Oh, okay. He's not going to do that. I guess no, because I guess in the next turn I could empty Katie, take a credit, take a credit. No. Empty Katie, take credit, run R&D, run remote. Yeah, I could have done it with the Katie. That's why. On this, right? So he go if he install advance, advances the fetal. I could have done empty Katie, take credit to get the four credits. Run archives or R&D. I guess I can't run R&D now. Uh, that would get me four data suckers. Oh, that wouldn't be five, though. Anyway, he put an extra ice and something there, so it's not good. A second clone chip. I don't know why I'm installing that. But I got a second Katie, so I should have enough money now. It's just about data suckers. But who knows, that archives probably has like a she in it. Okay, there goes the double advanced fetal. Oh, boy. Yeah, this remote only leave the centrals open strategy, right, is really something. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to like fully understand why it works so well. Um, you know, it's like, and I think part of it is that it's like, you know, you make a deck, okay, and yeah, I'm really trying to figure out how not to lose right now. <laughs> Empty Katie has to happen, obviously. Um, you make a deck that works so well, right, against ice. You have to be able to beat ice. Otherwise, people who play ice will beat you, right? So I'm playing ice destruction. Great. Um, notice I didn't draw any parasites this game at all. That's really killing me. Uh, and no ways to get them. I guess I can clone chip SMC one. It's, it's not going to matter. The... Um, you know, and your goal is like, I have things like indexing. I have three indexing. That is my centrals. That's my punishment, right, is indexing. Ways to make runs more effective. I didn't draw any. I have three. I didn't draw any. Uh, if I would have drawn one this game, that would have been huge. Um, and if you, people just leave their centrals open, especially, I mean, he's leaving his centrals open because his agendas are all hard to score from centrals, right? So it does, and... He's replicating perfection. So if you want to run the remote, you have to spend an extra click running the central, right, in the first place, which is a pain. Archives is super protected with things like Shiku and Shock. HQ, just, you know, you, you can't... It, scoring agendas out of there is expensive, even if you find them. So it's like you, you have to run the remote. Great, so he only has to build one server, a remote. <laughs> and he barely protects the centrals. So the only way you can beat this is to severely punish those centrals with things like legwork or indexing or maker's eye or account siphon or vamp right if you don't have those cards then this kind of deck you know running those centrals and seeing one card at a time right especially if you don't score them agendas when you do see them is really just that's the tax the tax isn't the one extra you pay to get access to the remote it's that you spend all your turns just running centrals and do it for, uh, ineffectively, not making money, not building a rig, not gaining an ability to access the remote, right? And then when you do have to access, try to run the remote, it's just a stack of ice and he can res all of it and you didn't build anything to be able to beat it yet because you spent all your clicks running R&D and getting nothing out of it, right? When people try to actually defend, right, that's usually when I can, you know, do something about it, right? They spend their money on that, right? They spend their clicks installing ice on that. Um, they don't have the, the clicks and money to make this, this remote that I can't actually get into. Oh, I don't have enough memory. Getting rid of this app, man. Right? The reason I'm getting rid of the Atman is because uh, now that the Parasite's in the trash, I can clone ship that. Okay, so boom, goodbye, Koma Inu. Probably should have run HQ earlier in this game. Um, that was a big mistake, right? Because he was holding those three pointers there, unbeknownst to me. Yeah. 
Uh, and I probably I, I had a chance to win the side game and take them, right? You win. Yeah, he wins. Ugh. I also, you know, against the other deck that I tend to lose against is like this World is Yours deck where all they do is, you know, like they just leave the centrals open. It's like, I'm, it's like just giving me what I want sort of ruins me. And, you know, again, I think, you know, regardless if I didn't draw indexing, I did draw indexing or whatever, you know, or adding a legwork or, or something like that. The card that would really solve this problem is Desperado because when I make all those runs on those free central servers, right, I'd be making all the money that I didn't have that I need in order to score, right? Because that's the th you need the same thing to score all three of those agendas, money, right? I would have four credits when I hit an NAPD. I would have two credits when I hit a fetal. I would have money to play the side game if I see the future perfect because I have a Desperado. So Grimoire... I think, you know, Enigma was the reason that you were good. Now that I, you know, look at the past. And now that Quandary has hit town, I think, uh, and so is NEPD and Future Perfect. Desperado is now, you know, even more superior than it was before. Like, so, my deck is finally a changing. Split the final round. Uh, went four and four on the day. There you have it, uh, a tournament. So, next tournament uh, is actually going to be this Sunday, May 17th, no, 18th, every other Sunday at the 20-sided store, the first and third Sundays of the month in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I'm probably going to go there, and we're going to see some new decks in the next batch of videos. Um, I didn't put up videos for the tournament that happened on the... Uh, previous to this tournament because um, I think that was like Easter Sunday. It was a holiday. There was a really low turnout and the games weren't very good. And those videos were taken with my old camera. And now that I have the new camera, don't really want to work on videos that were taken with the old camera anymore. Um, and, you know, those games aren't really relevant now uh, since I didn't have time to produce those, uh, those videos. Those are pre-honor and profit. They're not as relevant, and there wasn't really a lot to learn from them. Uh, so next time, you're going to see some new stuff.